guys, it's Sam from Sugar Spun Run, and today I'll be showing you how to make garlic knots. Today's recipe is super simple. We are actually starting with my basic, easy, well-loved pizza dough recipe, and we're turning that into these flavorful garlic knots. I think you're going to love this recipe, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'll want you to do is preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we're not actually going to be baking these garlic knots for a little bit just yet, but you want to have that oven preheating. It's going to give you a warm spot on top of the oven to let your dough rise, so get that oven started now. Next, you are going to need a large bowl, and we are going to add one cup of bread flour or all-purpose flour. Now, I recommend using bread flour for this recipe. All-purpose flour will work instead. It's just going to make your garlic knots a little softer and a little more chewy if you use all-purpose. Keep in mind that if you don't use cups, if you prefer to use metric or weight measurements instead, I do have all of those listed in the printable recipe below. Next, we are going to add one packet or two and a fourth teaspoon of instant or rapid rise yeast. We'll also add one and a half teaspoons of granulated sugar, three fourths teaspoon of salt, and a half teaspoon of garlic powder. Now just use a spoon to mix everything together until these ingredients are nicely combined. Next, you'll need to add 3 fourths cup of warm water. You want this to be between 105 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's too hot, you can end up killing your yeast. You don't want that. We'll also add 2 tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil and use our spoon to stir everything together until this mixture is completely combined. One of the things I love about this recipe is you don't need a stand mixer or an electric mixer. The whole thing can be made by hand. All you need is a bowl and a wooden spoon. All right, now we are going to need to add more flour to this, obviously. You're going to need about another cup to another one and a third cups of bread or all-purpose flour. We'll add this gradually, adding just as much as you need until the mixture starts to come together and it should be an elastic texture that's pulling away from the sides of the bowl. You won't always need the full additional one and a third cups. This is still pretty sticky, so we're just going to add a little bit more flour. So at this point, our dough is actually looking pretty good. It's formed a cohesive ball. It's not too sticky if we touch it. It's a little bit tacky, but it's not sticky. It's not really sticking to our fingers, and it's not sticking to the side of the bowl. So what we need now is you're going to need a separate bowl, and we'll just lightly brush this with olive oil. Now that we have that bowl oiled, you'll just want to lightly flour your hands. I just dust mine lightly with flour and we'll grab our pizza dough, or I guess now it's our garlic knot dough, and we'll form it into a round ball. And we'll place this in our oiled bowl and just use your hands to roll it through the bowl so that the whole surface of this dough is covered in olive oil, just a light coating. Cover this bowl with plastic wrap and now we're going to take it to a warm place where we'll let it rise for about 30 minutes. Now remember how we preheated our oven in the beginning? The top of your oven is probably going to be the best place for your dough to rise. We'll let this set for 30 minutes or until it's about doubled in size. Once your dough has doubled in size, now we're going to transfer this to a lightly floured clean surface. You'll need to break your dough into about nine pieces. I found that the easiest way to do this is just form the dough into about a 15 inch long by about two inch wide log, and then just use a knife to make cuts in that that are about slightly larger than one and a half inches wide. Alternate rolling the dough between your palms and gently stretching it until you get a reasonable sized piece of rope. It should be about eight inches in length, and then you can just gently tie that into a knot. Be sure to dust your hands with flour as needed because you don't want this to be too sticky or else you're going to have a lot of trouble tying it into a knot. We'll just place these on a parchment paper lined baking sheet. Now you can skip this step, but I like to just gently brush each garlic knot with a little bit of olive oil at this point. Now set these on top of your preheated oven and let them rise for just another five minutes and then we'll bake them in our 400 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven for about 13 minutes or until the tops are just beginning to turn a light golden brown. While the garlic knots are baking, we're gonna head over to our stovetop where we are going to make what really makes these garlic knots super garlicky and super good. You're going to need a small saucepan and just place this on your burner. And then you're going to add four tablespoons of salted butter and three cloves of minced garlic. This is about one and a half tablespoons of minced garlic. 
Now my recipe does make a lot of this garlic butter topping. You could probably get away with cutting this in half and you'd probably be fine, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. I found this is a good amount for me. So what we're gonna do is we'll take our butter and our minced garlic and we'll heat this over medium heat, stirring frequently until the butter is melted and until we can smell that garlic. It should just take about a minute or so for that to become fragrant. Once your butter's melted and that garlic is fragrant, we're going to remove this from heat and we'll stir in a heaping tablespoon of minced fresh basil. Just stir everything together until that's nicely combined. And just set this aside until your garlic knots have finished baking. Let these garlic knots cool for about three to five minutes on the pan and then use a pastry brush to generously coat the tops of each garlic knot with your garlic butter topping. Once you've brushed every knot with your garlic topping, they are ready to enjoy. And that is how simple it is to make completely from scratch garlic knots at home. As you saw, today's recipe was super simple, really easy to make, minimal effort required, and no mixer. If you guys try this one out, please let me know what you think. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Hey, if you guys enjoyed today's garlic knot video, I would really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up and please subscribe. Also, if you enjoyed today's video, here are a few others you might like as well.